free motion tutorial today on Quilting Arts. Bernina of America Incorporated. Bernina, made to create. BerninaUSA.com. Cavill Sewing, when you need to cut it close. CavillSewing.com. eQuilter.com. WarmCompany.com. CoatsandClark.com. Motion is a favorite topic for art quilters. Unique thread patterns are an all-important layer in contemporary quilting. Hi, I'm Pokey Bolton, and today's guests include two free motion stars with some beautiful designs to share. We begin with Ellen Ann Eddy and free motion techniques for making flower motifs. She's making pattern-free embellished flowers with free motion applique stitching. Then meet Lindsay Murray for some of the best quilt storage and organization tips for both your machine and your studio. Finally, Anna Bazzolino presents lesson four on our free motion tutorial and using a basic free motion machine quilting design in different configurations for interesting effects. Our machine is all set, so let's join Ellen. Well, Ellen and Eddie is back with us this season, and today you're going to be showing us how to make these beautiful floral motifs for uh, with free motion applique. Absolutely. Well, um, how do we get started? Well, these are done out of spirals, and I've used all kinds of different shears for them. This is hand-dyed cheesecloth. Okay, and what did you do? Do you fuse that to a fusible base? I fused base? that on with a fusible base, and then you pat it on and then pat it down. And what I've done, when you get them all together, you can put them on a pressing cloth and iron them and make them like the Buddhist monk with the hot dog one with everything. <laughs> <laughs> so you're really using all different kinds of um, fibers and fabrics Absolutely. in this. Absolutely. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's lovely. And, and, and colorful and, and a lot of texture too. Right, and once we get this all put together, we can kind of build it bit by bit by bit. You put down one spiral and then twist in another spiral. And it's tacky, the fusible's tacky on one side, so it allows right. you to so it lets audition, you but audition not Audition and, and play with things and get them exactly where you want them. Right, right, okay. And once you get them where you want them, then you put them on a stabilizer sandwich. Now this stabilizer sandwich is my background. It's a, it's a, it's a pellon, a felt, and hand dyed fabric. Okay, so you've got a heavyweight interfacing, a felt, and a fabric. Got it. Okay. Right. Because what that's going to do, this is going to really want to kiss when we're done. It's really going to pucker up. Okay. And we want to cure it by cutting. Okay. Okay. So we're not going to actually see this background. Um, we're going to cut actually, it away. this is the one we're going to see, but this is the one we're not. This okay. This is started. We've started this one out, and it's been fused on this. Whatever I have on this background is going to show through. Okay. It's not a waste that it's a pretty piece of hand dye. It's a pretty piece of hand dye with a purpose. And it's the same sandwich. That it's exactly that you the have. same sandwich. Now let's talk about the threads that you use for this, because this is you're going to do um, show us how to use a zigzag. This free is motion a zigzag stitch. free motion. I've got a polyester embroidery thread. Uh -huh. Poly, rayon, and cotton will all work. Poly is shiny and strong. And your rayon work is, is certainly shiny. shiny. And cotton is strong, but it's not shiny. And I'm mm -hmm. a magpie, and I can't go there. <laughs> okay. I just can't. And let's talk about um, choice of needles. You want a 90 top stitching needle, you want a really sharp needle, and that big eye is going to break take care of breakage well for us. Mm -hmm. And and are you uh, of the of the school of thought that every time you go to your machine every you day, use a new, new, new day, needle? New day, new needle, new project, new needle. It's it's just so much wiser. And we're going to use, I've got this whole wide range of colors here because mm -hmm. I'll use all of those for a rose and like that. And do you that. use the same color for the top and bobbin threads or do you vary in it? In theory, yes. In practice, no. Okay. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to lower my top tension just a bit. Okay. And then it's going to sink to the bottom and no one will know. If you use the same color. If it, well, if it shows, we change it. But if it okay. doesn't show, then you scooted by and you're all right. Okay. Well, I'd love to see you. Okay, we're going to set up the machine with a zigzag stitch. And I've got a hoop on it, which is always great. As I said before, new day, new needle, and I've got my new 90 top stitching. I'm going to put sewer's aid on my thread. That's going to make it stronger, and we can just sort of drool that across the top. 
and I've got my machine set at a zigzag stitch and I'm going to stitch on one of the edges that's still free. Now I see you've got an open toe free motion foot. Is that, do you always use that foot or do you ever use Most a closed the toe time, foot? Not, not of choice. Not of choice. Because you like the open toe so you can see where you're going? That and I love to be able to escape once I've over embroidered something. Okay. And there are three bits to this and they're all about how the machine, how the fabric goes through the machine. When I do my outline, I'm moving straight through and I'm going to cut my thread so you can see what I'm doing and that's not a distraction to you. And so we're going to outline that, that's straight through, that's my, my outline of that. Then I'm going to start shading it. Oh wow. And that makes a beautiful fill in and then I can smooth between those. So do you go once around or do you do multiple um, times around the perimeter? Um, well, I, I go around each spiral actually. So we're going to change colors. I'm going to go into that nice deep red. Now which color do you see the most when you're done? The, the one that the color you first put down or the last color? You'll probably see the color you outline with and some of the colors are on the inside of the rows and some are on the outside. So you'll see the ones that are outside most. And when we go to put it down, we can either use the same color or not. I notice you use very, very bright threads. All of your work is uh, pretty, pretty neon and uh, fluorescent. It seems to me that your quilts practically glow in the dark. I like that myself. I like having, I don't see much sense in putting all that thread work in and being subtle. <laughs> well, so, subtlety is, um, is something that you don't, you don't see in your quilts. They're, they're quite no. whimsical. No. Now I'm going to do the same trick, but it's worth seeing because what happens is it makes it blend into itself. We've got our outlining and then we're shading and then we're smoothing. You're going and pretty fast on the machine. You don't have to oh, worry yeah. about the speed no. when you're doing no, no, no. zigzags? No, no, there is no such thing as a too fast machine. Um, you have much more control sewing fast than you do slow. Sewing slow is like, 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 uh, like riding a Bible, or not a, riding a bicycle slowly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You wobble. You wobble. If you go fast, you go smoothly. So you go, so you go fast. You go Push beautifully. The pedal to the metal. And you can see where that fills that in, and that nice. makes that neat and tidy. I'm going to grab my scissors. This rose is all stitched. So let's just take a look at that before you stitch that out. So you have stitched all the way around. All I've gone all bits. around the edges. Huh. And I'm going to miss the um, stitching. I so how close do you go to the edge there? As close as I anatomically can. Now what happens if you actually, uh, have you ever cut right into a stitched line? Of course. And how do you, can you fix it? Sure, you just stitch a whole lot over that. Okay. <laughs> just take it back to the machine? Just Well, actually, no, we're going to do that. Why don't I make the air for you so you can see okay. it done? I'd prefer to make all of my mistakes in front of people. Okay. Because real boats rock. So we're going to just nip into that corner. I did a bad. There mm -hmm. we are. And when I stitch over that, you and God and I will know, and God and I will be silent. So nobody, nobody's going to see that error. No, no, no. Perfect it happens somewhere else. So we can cut that out. And these are wonderful. I have numerous little bits of undone quilts in my studio, which are really great because there you are with this wonderful thing waiting for an opportunity. And you can see that rumply bit there, mm -hmm. that's all gonna go away. It's called curing by cutting. Curing by cutting. Now, do you pra do a practice um, sandwich first before your, you go straight to your machine to a, for working on a quilt or you just go right to the quilt? I do, um, I'll make my elements separately. Mm -hmm. but, but do you have to, do you feel like you need a warm up exercise no, or anything? No, 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 no. I I've, I've been doing this for thirty some years now. It's mm -hmm. I kind of can do it in my sleep. Admittedly, the colors are different when you do it in your sleep. <laughs> so we're just about to cut this all out. We have it almost all cut out, and it's and all that bad thing that's going on there is going away.
and the smoother it is, the better it is, but we can smooth out a great deal. I've also extended my points as I've been stitching on it mm -hmm. because it makes it a kind of a neater rose, it's that tea rose kind of thing. Okay, so then now, the, now this is stitched out, so this is an applique that you would then stitch down. Right. And when you're doing that, that's when you can correct the place where you've cut exactly. into your stitched edge? Okay. Exactly. I'm going to go back to my machine. I'm going to set my stitch wider. Because you want to catch the fabric in addition to the applique oh, I design? Wanna, I want to really cover over okay. my, my sins. Excellent. Whatever sins and crimes I have, we need to cover up. And I'm going to just plop that baby in. And I would normally follow the edges of the colors I've put in. This is actually a darker red, but that's pretty. And it'll give it a more firm edge. And this you kind of have to manipulate around it a little bit. I am free motion, so I can move it back and forth. Now, do you worry about thread tension at all when you or um, when you? I lower my top tension. You but lower other than top that, tension. No, okay. no. If it doesn't show and it isn't being icky, I have gone over the edge. I think that's a good thing. And I can, when I bind that, take it over the edge. And I'm just going to make a nice smooth edge out of that. I may need to kind of mash it down with my first stitching, but I can smooth it out. Can we talked about making a point. So how 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 many times do you make a pass? Do you just keep going back over and over with Until the Until it's pretty. Okay. Because you're not using a satin stitch. No, I'm not. I'm actually angled with a about a 45 degree angle, 40 to 45 degree angle. Okay. And that's going to give me really pretty coverage. It's like a stem stitch if I were stitching by hand. Let's see what that looks like. There we are. Oh, nicely. Okay, so I can see how you would cover up a mistake if you cut into it. It's not right. a problem. You and God and I would know. And that's it. Well, let's take a look at this finished piece here. Oh, that um, is beautiful. Here is a finished rose. This one was made out of cheesecloth. Uh-huh. And if you've designed well, you can show it from any direction. It's just gorgeous. Thank you. Well, let's take a look at some of your quilts. Tell us about this piece here. Um, I was playing with wisteria blossoms. And so that's what that is. And those were done, the whole branch was done with the flowers and then applied afterwards. And then I see the same floral motif is right here. Yes, that's our little rose all finished up. Just gorgeous. And I like how you went outside of the, of the um, finished edge for the leaf. Gives it a nice effect. It's, it's sad to just cut things off. It just is. <laughs> I was working with a jazz series where I just took shapes and cut them. Those were spiral roses. This was teardrops. Um, this was just some really wild flowers, and these were hostas. And let's take a, tell us about this quilt that's behind us. This is a butterfly garden, and of course a butterfly garden must have absolutely wild flowers. And caterpillars. You don't get caterpillars if and, you don't have butterflies. And frogs with very big lips. That's me. That's my <laughs> personal, that's me. That's uh. me in my garden. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming. And speaking of frogs, our next guest, Lindsay Murray, happens to love frogs. So Good. 